We have special report. Here's Savannah Guthrie. Hi, everybody. Good morning. We come on the air with breaking news, a historic moment in the 2024 presidential race. Nikki Haley addressing supporters in South Carolina. For president. When I began, I said the campaign was grounded in my love for our country. Just last week, my mother, a first generation immigrant, got to vote for her daughter for president. Only in America. I am filled with the gratitude for the outpouring of support we've received from all across our great country. But the time has now come to suspend my campaign. I said I wanted Americans to have their voices heard. I have done that. I have no regrets. And although I will no longer be a candidate, I will not stop using my voice for the things I believe in. Our national debt will eventually crush our economy. A smaller federal government is not only necessary for our freedom, it is necessary for our survival. The road to socialism is the road to ruin for America. Our Congress is dysfunctional and only getting worse. It is filled with followers, not leaders. Term limits for Washington politicians are needed now more than ever. Our world is on fire because of America's retreat. Standing by our allies in Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan is a moral imperative. But it's also more than that. If we retreat further, there will be more war, not less. As important, while we stand strong for the cause of freedom, we must bind together as Americans. We must turn away from the darkness of hatred and division. I will continue to promote all those values as is the right of every American. I sought the honor of being your president, but in our great country, being a private citizen is privilege enough in itself. And that's a privilege I very much look forward to enjoying. In all likelihood, Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee when our party convention meets in July. I congratulate him and wish him well. I wish anyone well who would be America's president. Our country is too precious to let our differences divide us. I have always been a conservative Republican and always supported the Republican nominee. But on this question, as she did on so many others, Margaret Thatcher provided some good advice when she said, quote, never just follow the crowd, always make up your own mind. It is now up to Donald Trump to earn the votes of those in our party and beyond it who did not support him. And I hope he does that. At its best, politics is about bringing people into your cause, not turning them away. And our conservative cause badly needs more people. This is now his time for choosing. I end my campaign with the same words I began it from the book of Joshua. I direct them to all Americans, but especially to so many of the women and girls out there who put their faith in our campaign. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for God will be with you wherever you go. In this campaign, I have seen our country's greatness. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, America. God bless you. Nikki Haley in South Carolina after a brutal Super Tuesday deciding to bow out of the presidential race, suspending her campaign. But for all intents and purposes, it is over. We'll turn to our senior Washington correspondent, Hallie Jackson and Kristen Welker, moderator of Meet the Press. Lost to chew over, but boy, what a pointed message for her former appointed, opponent, former President Donald Trump. Not only did she not endorse, she said she's basically watching to see if he reaches out an olive branch to some of the independent and moderate voices within the Republican Party, up to 40 percent that had supported her in this primary season. That's right, Savannah. She's effectively saying, I'm not going to endorse you yet, quoting Margaret Thatcher to say, don't follow the crowd, make up your own mind. Really powerful words there. To your point, 40, 30 percent of voters in these primary races have decided to vote for Nikki Haley. Now, some of those are independent. Some of those are Democrats, people who are never going to vote for Donald Trump. But some of them are gettable 
voters. I have spoken to some of them who've said, ultimately will probably back the Republican nominee, but can he win them over? I spoke with someone close to Nikki Haley this morning about the endorsement. They said, look, the door is open, but her message stands. He's got to win those votes and hers. These are gettable voters by either former President Trump or by President right. Biden. Didn't you find that interesting that she said, I think she, he, she said, it is his time for choosing. That's it is exactly Donald right. Trump's time for choosing. Because up until this point, the, the Trump message has been, if you're not with me, you're against me. He yeah, said, bye. we don't want the MAGA, we don't want the Nikki Haley rhino Republican in the name only Republicans anymore. Get out. It's not the olive branch. It's still a question of, is he going to extend that olive branch, right? That is just not former President Trump's style to do that in these kinds of moments. But Nikki Haley made really clear, it is up to you, Donald Trump. She put that very clearly to him to go out and to win over the people who backed me. We're not talking about a huge slice mm -hmm. of the electorate. It's a very small number of people. You said 40% maybe 20 percent in that range that is going to matter come november in the general election for donald trump or for joe biden and you heard haley say something else that was interesting there she said i'm going to continue to use my voice to talk about what i believe in the voice that she is using right what she is representing in the gop is not where the mainstream of the party is and you heard even a nod to that when she talked about i'm going to stand by for example support to ukraine she is out of step in some ways with her own party but can she carry on that mantle for that sort of portion of the party that doesn't necessarily want to see Donald Trump in office. Well, she stuck to her policy guns, certainly right to the mm -hmm. end. And she also talked about being a private citizen. So for the moment, she's not talking about some future political run. We shall see. It's never over with politicians. NBC's Ali Vitale joins us. She was in the room. And take us behind the scenes there, Ali. You cover this campaign. What was the thinking about going into this morning and going into Super Tuesday? It was so notable. You did not see the candidate last night. It's as though they yeah. knew they could read the math as well as anybody else that this day was coming. Savannah, they always said that they knew the odds, but they also knew the stakes, and that's why they continued to fight on through Super Tuesday, despite the fact that the poll showed that it would be a real slog at the ballot box, and that's exactly what it was. In the room here, a somber tone. You saw the candidate get right to the podium and, frankly, get right to the point, saying that she was suspending her race for president, but that she wasn't going to stop using her voice as a private citizen. I also thought it was really striking, the fact that she said, I have always supported my party's nominee. She called herself a conservative Republican. The fact that someone like that with those conservative credentials is not coming out and endorsing Donald Trump as the nominee underscores things that I've been hearing from my sources on the Haley campaign and allies of it who say Trump can say that the party is unified behind him, but that's not in fact true when you have his lone rival not endorsing him, at least not yet. And then you've also got her basically issuing a challenge to the former president saying to her, her former boss, you have to now win those voters back. And I do think the unspoken part of that, Savannah, is or else. You look at states like Georgia and Wisconsin, these are states that turn on a very slim margin of voters, even a portion of them staying home and not voting in for the Republican nominee could be substantial. That's a warning that we're going to look back on depending on how 2024 turns. Was Nikki Haley right? That independent suburban mom string of the electorate is often yeah. determinative, as we know. So we'll see which way they go. Allie, thank you. I want to go quickly to NBC's Garrett Haig, who covers the Trump campaign. And Garrett, we are now hearing from former President Trump, who is now officially the presumptive Republican nominee. That's right, Savannah. And we see the olive branch from Trump to Nikki Haley's supporters, such as it is in the form of a social media post in which he mocks Nikki Haley, he says, for being trounced in, on Super Tuesday last night. And then at the end of a lengthy post says he invites all of her supporters to join what he calls the greatest movement in the history of our nation. He goes on to say that Biden, President Biden, is the enemy as he concludes this post. And that's in line with what I have heard from so many of his advisors, that they are not going to go chase Nikki Haley. Haley's voters. They're not going to make the kind of appeal that I think Nikki Haley just suggested might be necessary to win these folks over. Rather, they're going to try to make the argument that is Joe Biden and his policies that should, they believe, push those voters back into the Trump camp where they will be waiting for them. It's a strategy uh, that is clearly untested, uh, but I think that's what you're going to get from Donald Trump. He has shown no particular interest to change his messaging or kind of his broader strategy to appeal to a bigger slice of the electorate. And in fact, 
One of his most senior campaign advisors told me yesterday, why would they change what they have done so far? They believe has worked perfectly for them in a primary. They don't intend a strategy shift like what Nikki Haley has suggested here or what she seems to have opened the door for. They are going to hope that Joe Biden simply pushes those voters back into the MAGA fold, Savannah. Well, we shall see if the winning primary strategy translates to a general election. The general election is on. That concludes this NBC News special report. We'll have much more streaming on NBC News Now. We're online at NBCNews.com and, of course, tonight on Nightly News. Most of you will return now to more of today. I'm Savannah Guthrie. Thanks for watching.